Welcome back to another episode of Master the Art of Music Creation Remix at avidblocks.com. This is the synth element I created in the previous episode by using multiple virtual instruments as well as advanced media editing features in Pro Tools. Today I'd like to take this element to the next level with some audio editing and mixing. Before doing that, I will print the synths to audio. Working with audio at some point in your production workflow offers many benefits. For a start, you can visually see where the audio starts and ends, making it easy to clean things up like reverb and delay tails. It's more CPU friendly, leaving more power on my system for mixing and arranging with even more VIs at any time. Audio clips also offer a different set of editing features, like Audio Suite plugins. By making use of clip gain and real time fades in Pro Tools, I can arrange my song much faster and easier. With Elastic Time in Pro Tools, I can do tempo changes to audio just the same as with MIDI. Last but not least, I work sample based with audio. And at any time, I can exchange my session with other collaborators without worrying about instruments or plugins compatibility between different systems. In a situation like this, where I like to print five different virtual instruments, I also take advantage of the option to bounce multiple sources at the same time. To make this process easier, I prepare what I call BIP bounce in place buses in the I.O. window. Next I select the tracks I wish to print to audio and assign the output of each track to one of these BIP buses. There's a shortcut how you can do this quickly. Just hold down Shift plus Option plus Command and select the BIP bus on the first track. All the following tracks will automatically be assigned to the next higher number. Now I will open the Bounce dialog window. Also there's a shortcut Option plus Command plus B. At the top of the window, I can now select the first BIP bus as source. By clicking the plus button, the next higher BIP bus will be created. Now I just make sure that offline and import after bounce are ticked and off we go. The import dialog window gives the options whether to create new tracks for the bounced files and where the files will be placed in my current session. I choose same as selection, that will place them just underneath my source instrument tracks on new audio tracks. That was fast and easy. In order to keep the instrument tracks for later changes or additions, I won't delete them, but at the same time I also like to free the resources on my CPU that they use. For that I'm using a legacy feature, but still one of a kind for me, that is hide and make inactive. Those tracks will now disappear from the edit and mix window and also will be taken off my CPU completely. As I mentioned before, having the synth element now as audio tracks gives me more options for my creative ideas. First, I will cut the audio to grid in order to get rid of delay and reverb tails. You can change the grid setting in the main ruler. While working in grid mode, my edits will always fit on that exact grid value. For this part, a 16th grid is just perfect. To make the edits easier, I will create a group. Just select the tracks and use the group command or the shortcut command plus G. I can choose to have either an edit, mix or combined mix edit group. This setting decides whether my tracks will be grouped in both the edit and mix window or just either one of them. Right now I'm fine to have them just grouped for editing purposes but I could modify the setting at any time. Now selecting a clip on one track will also select all clips in the grouped tracks. After finishing my edits, I apply a short in and out fade on each clip in order to avoid clipping. Instead of doing this on a clip by clip basis, I can just select all of them and hit the F key on my keyboard. You can't see them right now, but when I zoom in using the T key, you can see the little fades on each clip.
In order to make the synth line a bit more interesting, let's reverse some of the clips. I used the Reverse Audio Suite plugin for that. I'm using it a lot in my workflow, so I have it saved as a window configuration. Now I can record the plugin much faster than using the menu. Working with Audio Suite plugins and window configuration offers even more benefits that I will cover in the upcoming episodes in more detail. Ok, let's do something just here. First, I'll create a copy just in front of this clip. Yes, this is a really nice one and here's how to do this. Hold down all three modifier keys and just click on the clip. Next, I will render the reverse plugin on this track. And last but not least, I will create a long fade-in. I just place the selector here and hit the D key that will create a fade from the beginning of that clip to the selector. By holding down command while moving the clip with the grabber tool, I can move the clip now on a sample basis, rather the grid value I'm working in. This is equal to the mode slip that you find just here. But for most music creation workflows, grid mode is just perfect. By the way, this fine resolution shortcut, by holding down the command key, also works with fader or plugin parameter adjustments. Give it a try, it's really helpful for mixing too. Let's listen to the reverse effect on the synths. Yes, that sounds really cool. I'll do this at some other positions and then move on to some initial mixing of the synths. Mix as you create. With more than 1100 different AX plugins, I have an amazing selection of processing tools that help me to create great sounding elements. By stacking five different virtual instruments, I've already created a very rich sound. Now I'd like to add some reverb, compression and delay as well as equalizing it. One of my absolute favorite plugins is the Channel Strip from Avid that comes as part of Pro Tools software. It's probably the most widely used plugin in my sessions. It offers everything I need on a track, sounds great and I love the dynamics section. So on each synth track I've inserted the channel strip in order to give each signal a little bit of compression and also using the filter section to cut out frequencies I don't need. As I use it so often I've promoted it to the top of my plugin list. You can easily do this with any of your favorite plugins by just holding down the command key while selecting the plugin. Next time you open the list the plugin will be there at the top. You can remove it the same way. All of the synth tracks will feed two different buses. That makes mixing techniques like parallel compression very easy. One of the buses I use the Avid MC77 in order to add strong compression. The other bus remains unprocessed. Both signals are feeding to the hook bus where some more AX plugins will shape the sound. The Clariphonic Parallel Equalizer from Kush Audio adds some silk on the top end. In order to glue everything more together, I use another compression stage with the XCOM from SSL. I love tape emulation plugins and the one from Slate Digital is definitely one of my favorite ones. I can't really tell what it does, but it gives it that nice analog feeling. Pro Tools offers up to 10 inserts on each track and I couldn't deal with less. So on my next insert slot, there's the Air Vintage Filter, one of the over 60 plugins that are included with every Pro Tools system. When you hold down the control key, you can bypass all plugins on one track. So listen to the difference with and without processing. The synths sound much brighter, wider, right up in your face and what I really like is they sound much more aggressive with the processing. Enough for today, please don't miss the next episode when I start creating a beat by using native instrument battery, the fantastic UVI workstation, the Pro Tools Loop Browser and some other really cool stuff. See you there! Sharp as daggers, so they could cut you to the heart, make them sharp as daggers. Oh, if